Good to see everyone. I think I, I met most of you um, already in the lab. Um, so my name is Kevin. I'm an instructor in PNL, and I'm going to talk about MRI data and neuroimaging as a very basic introduction for you guys. I'm going to start by saying the neuroscience is very interdisciplinary study. It is, uh, it is the field where experts from many different scientific um, areas come in, like mathematics, engineering, of course, biology and medicine, psychology, and even social science. And this is the case because um, main functional unit of the brain is the neuron. But even though there's a single functional unit, there's a lot of synapses in a single neuron, and there's a bunch of neurotransmitters and other molecules involved for the function of the neurons, which alters the function um, by different combinations. That's not only it. Uh, multiple neurons form circuits, and these circuits also form maps, and these maps create systems, and then these systems uh, lead to our different behaviors, even psychiatric symptoms, or ch uh, changes in our phenotype thought process as well. These different levels of information that we have to extract is why, that is why we need so many experts from different areas. So we need to model them using mathematics. We, we need to make apparatuses and machineries that we can get information from, engineering, and of course, to understand uh, biological mechanisms, biology, chemistry, and so on. And the same goes for neuroimaging. So when you think about neuroimaging, I normally think about a pretty picture of a brain, but the actual um, concept is a lot more wider than a simple um, pretty picture. Yeah, so um, you can think of neuroimaging a topic on an axis. So if you look at this way, you can think of it as a machine, the actual physical machine that you require your data from. And the human is where our question lies, our behavior and um, human disorders and so on. So the data from the machine gets saved as a signal and this gets converted into data and through set of softwares, we study our behavior. So this is already a very wide range of topics within neuroimaging. So the same, uh, so neuroimaging also is also very interdisciplinary. In a little more detail, so in MRI machine like ML physics, they study machines and new protocols that we can get better information in a shorter period of time. In signal, uh, you will probably see very soon the MRI data is quite messy with, with noise. So a bunch of efforts are going on to remove noise from the information. And also data, data is massive, so we can't just go by one by one. Uh, just voxel by voxel, we have to create a model and we have to analyze in a way that extracts the most information from the data. And we can't do this by hand, we need softwares, so we need to develop softwares for this. And then we will have to eventually run a study on our specific samples. And for example, we will have to collect very homogeneous samples that represent the general population that we want to study. I think um, PNL is quite unique in a way that we have many different people in different um, areas of expertise. I um, studied biology uh, and uh, medical science. So I have my main interest in finding biomarkers for psychiatric disorders. But to do this, I'm using MRI data and I'm making softwares to make it easier for me, for others as well. Other people also have interest in making better protocols um, so the so we get better signal. And other people focus on analysis of data, data, denoising and creating tools. So it's all different. So people next to you, they are studying slightly different things, but when we when we work together, that's when we can take an advantage of the environment like PNL. So make many friends, as many as you can, that would be really helpful for your project. But if you overlay field that each each person is is working on, even in PNL or generally in neuroimaging, many of them overlap on the data. So human, they need data. MRI machine, they have to look at the data, software takes input data and output data, and signal looks for 
ways to remove noise to make the better data. So if you understand how the data looks like and what it is in more detail, I think you can get better understanding of the neural imaging as a whole. And this will be a really good point to learn more about other stuff. So this is the signal from different sensors in the MRI machine, and this gets converted into image. And this is what we call, or what I refer to a data, image data. From this image data, we create models like tractography. A model can be quite confusing uh, um, for you guys if you haven't heard about it. So you can think of it as a um, way to extract most meaningful thing from a data. So there can be a bunch of models. Say if you extract white matter volume or gray matter volume from image, that's a model. You have volume model. If you extract tractography in the brain, that's a model representing your data. So there's a data and there's a models. And then uh, we collect this from a bunch of individuals that represent our study set. Then images, models, data sets. This is uh, in the middle of the neural imaging. And this is uh, what we are going to play around for a bit. When I look at it, I think of it as an apple. I see a top of apple, it's a tip, and then there's a leaf on it, and there's some details in the leaf. And I'm gonna zoom in. If I zoom in, I see a um, more zoomed area on the leaf. I still see the tip, but it's a still apple to me. I'm gonna zoom in again. There's a leaf, but still leaf is an object. I'm gonna zoom in again but then you start to see the little boundaries around the leaf. And now you think about it as an image. So it's an apple, but it's an image. I'm going to zoom in again. But image, the form of pixels. So here is a bright area, and here is a dark area, and here is some somewhat between them. And it's literally just numbers. So when it's bright, you have higher number. When it's dark, you have lower number, when it's somewhere between, you have somewhere between numbers. So the apple that you saw is numbers. It's just literally array of numbers. And I'm going to remove the apple. Now you see an array, you will see apple. So you can think of it as this image is an array of numbers. Okay. And now um, I show you the whole apple. You can think of it as an array. So here is a little bright containing higher numbers here. And here is darker. So it's just lower number. It's an array. So there's a cup of espresso. Here, dark again, lower number, brighter, higher number. It's just array. Same goes for cells. Here in the soma is, is not so bright, so it's in the middle range of numbers, but it's very bright, so it's a higher numbers, dark, lower number. Same goes for brain. Here, this is T1 weighted image, and CSF is very dark, so you just have low numbers here in the array. And the fats are around the skull have bright colors, and it's just containing higher numbers. That's it. So this is array, like this. The next slice on the brain, Looks like this, still an array, it goes on like this. So if you have a 3D brain, it's just 2D arrays laid on top of each other. This is simply number in array format. Um, if you understand this, this becomes very intuitive to work with not only with data, but also with models too, because the models also have very similar structures. When you see a brain, you would probably think temporal cortex, frontal cortex, cerebellum, and et cetera, but now, we can also think in terms of array. So the, the tone just changes. Um, as I uh, highlighted in Amanda's talk last time, the, the pixel is called just voxel, and it's just a unit that's containing a number. That's it. There's a different modality in, in MRI where people can take brain uh, image of an individual over a certain period of time. First image, second image, third image, and just takes on and on and on for a certain period of time and can and investigate changes in the brain. And it is also on the right, 3D array, 
3D array, 3D array, 3D array, stacked each other, and it's just 4D array. Okay, diffusion is the same thing. Diffusion, we have a standard template that we compare other images to, and then other diffusion weighted images in volumes following is a 4D array. Okay, it looks just like this. All right, I think um, we can try opening the data.